Elijah. We did not elect the chief of staff. We did not elect the joint chiefs. We did not elect the national security advisor. We elected the government of APC in 2015 and re-elected re them in 2019. The reason why we re-elected them was that they continued to tell us that because they had the key to security, and the whole Nigeria voted them in in 2015, and I agree with that. And I'm saying, Mr. President, when you want to deal with a matter, you go to the head. So we will go to the government and ask this government to resign because they can no longer do anything in this country. <laughs> Mr. President, in conclusion, yes, Nigerians voted a government into power. And that government even said, if we don't perform, stone us. The formula of Buhari in attending to rulership of this country since 2003 has been S plus S equals to P. Secure the land, stabilize the land through infrastructure development, then prosperity will emerge. There's no magic to prosperity. If you look at what has happened since it started in May 2015, and all attempts have been to secure the land. And the budget has just been signed, and that will attend to the field of stabilizing the land through infrastructure development. Of course, there are four years to do things, and I said, if within this period, then we don't perform, stone us. Did you, you, say, did you, you say, did you say Nigerians should perfect. stone you? Yes, that's what I said. If we don't perform in four years, stone us. We will secure this land, we will stabilize this land, and Nigerians will celebrate us. We are going with the stones to stone them now because they are no longer... Mr. President... Because we have to get to the root of this matter, I can only say one thing. Those who live by propaganda will die by propaganda. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Maz is okay here. Um, I hope everyone is doing all right. Um, a social political movement, as they are called, uh, in the Southeast, and they are known as Igbo Nigerian Movement, INF, has uh, disowned the lawmaker representing Abia South, that is um, the distinguished senator, the only one that deserves to have that title, distinguished, Enyinaya Abaribe. Over that call he made yesterday, you know, that I equally made a video yesterday where he called and he said that Buhari should resign. Now, these guys are saying that Abariba should apologize. They made their release yesterday in Orca, uh, you know, Anambra State, in which um, they've actually said um, that Senator Abariba, who is 64 years, must resign. Oh, well, first of all, apologize and I resigned and I laughed my head off. No, I said, Ma says, okay, I stand with Senator Abaribe. Buhari adds no value to us. He can, he should resign. Now, this statement was signed by Ifani Igwe and Polinus Ozani, and who basically acts as president and uh, secretary, respectively. You know, and they said... <laughs> In their statement, they said it is um, they expressed utter disappointment and disapproval of Mr. Abaribe's utterances. You know, we will come to the point where we look at what Abaribe was actually requesting. According to this group, this you know Nikon pools, um, they say it isn't surprising that Mr. Abaribe um start to already suffer the big blow after he's uh, hobnobbed with terrorist leader and i said listen we are all alive and these guys are saying these silly things this faceless group that called themselves inm basically said that the lawmaker and some of his allies may in fact be behind the supposed insecurity situation are 
only trying to create the impression that Mr. President is not delivering on his promises. Now, can we remind the APC, or can we remind Buhari what he said seven years ago under Good Luck Jonathan, that Jonathan should resign because Boko Haram was having a field day? Therefore, they said on behalf of Ndibo that they are disowning Abariba. And we say no. Zip it. You cannot speak for Ndibo. We speak for ourselves. Any Naya Abariba has done what an elected opposition has to do. Well, I think what any Naya Abariba did is having some, um, is having some, um, um, you know, positive uh, jive. Because today, um, uh, being the 30th of January, the president had a meeting with the service chiefs. Now, anything less than the service chiefs resigning or he that appointed the service chiefs resigning himself is not acceptable. Therefore, myself, Mazes, okay, I join any near Baribe and I will say I stand by any near Baribe in calling for the president of Federal Republic of Nigeria to resign because he, the president, has failed on the statutory duty of protecting life and property, which is what he's elected to do. He's a, uh, a general. Now, someone who is a general cannot provide security to the people. Remember, when Good Luck Jonathan was in power, these were people calling for Jonathan to resign. So suddenly, why would it be that calling for someone to resign becomes a crime as if it's something never done before? And equally, I find it a little bit insulting to say that because he had a, you know, he shot Eden and the colonel, therefore that he's hobnobbing with a terrorist leader. We are all alive. You see, these are things that makes your blood get hot in this nation. Nandikano was granted bail. Yes, we all knew it. He was in his house. No one is asking question. Why did the military invade his house? Had the military not invaded his Nandikano house, Nandikano did not appear. One would have now said that he jumped bail. But he came to a man's house to kill him and he wanted him to stay. Come on. And these guys, basically, that talk this rubbish, want us to believe that they are evil, that they have grey matters in between their skulls. Come on. Come on. Even they went further to say that they challenged Netabari to deny that other security breaches like kidnapping and banditry are not connected with the activities of the so-called travellers in, 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 you know, quote-unquote, the opposition and the IPOP people, then I, I laugh, I laugh in, in, in Honolulu. How can, if you have a president and you have chief of staffs, head of securities that know their onion, we want you to please go ahead and arrest every single person who is involved in criminal activities, be it Boko Haram that have AK-47, yet we cannot arrest them, we can do nothing to them because they are from certain areas and because they are certain people. You criticize the opposition, that the opposition is behind the insecurity. Please, they are the opposition. Treat them with hammer, arrest them, and tell us who are those behind the killings. Sometimes we wonder why this nation, like one of my uh, a friend who say, appears that our leaders or the leaders in this nation appear to reason from their behind. We have security, men, women, yet insecurity abound. This faceless group are saying that is on record that while waging this war on behalf of his party, meaning on behalf of any Nabaribe's party, that Abaribe is a major contributor to the insecurity in the country. You see, 
sorry. I cannot say this enough. It hurts me and it's, it's pure madness. Why would you call IPOP a terrorist organization? Why? IPOP is no terrorist organization for Christ's sake, for crying out loud. A people that have decided that, please, rather than call them for dialogue, rather what you say is that they are terrorists. Is it, is it anywhere on record that IPOP has ever killed a single fly, talk less of a human being? Yet, we have the terrorists masquerading as Fulani headsmen, rampaging farms, you know, raping women, and doing all manner of sorts. None, none of them can be arrested. We had it from Bala Mohammed. The Bala Mohammed clearly said that every Fulani anywhere from Africa can come to Nigeria and they are welcome because they are brothers and sisters. Can other other people in Nigeria say this? Yet, the president will tell us that the crimes and things happening are not done by certain people. These people, they say they are foreigners, yet we cannot protect and guide our borders. At the same time, the same people will tell you, go and grant Go and live in peace with your brothers. How does that happen? Again, I think Enyinaya Baribe is a hero that we must all celebrate. I don't even know why suddenly this bugs them. Because this is not the first time that Enyinaya Baribe has made that call. Enyinaya Baribe, remember? A couple of years back, I think in 2018, had actually said the same thing in the floors of the Senate. That was when Buk um, Dr. Bukhara Sawaki was the Senate president. It's not the first time. It's not going to be the last time. Neither is it going to be something that will stop as long as misfits, governors. We have security chiefs that are not delivering results, yet the president finds it impossible to even change them. We have young men, women that are in the army, that are in the navy, that are in everywhere who can deliver. Yet the president does not look their side because probably they are not from his backyard. And you call that a nation. That is no nation. That such nation is a nation I do not want to be part of. Enough of this nonsense. Enough of this madness there is no way we can allow this to continue you see that the people are not secured senators are beginning to speak up in this video i'll show you the senator um representing uh, the senator from adamawa that is the sex toy buyer you know the one that slapped a lady in sex toy in sex toy shop in abuja suddenly he began to speak up so it is no longer about abaribe he said it, he can no longer keep quiet. Because why? It appears they are closing up on them. Suddenly, everyone is beginning to speak. You know one thing? Many people think because that, you know, they can move with um, security men or, you know, uh, police or whatever, that it doesn't concern them. Listen, <laughs> one day, one day it will be your turn. It is better that we all speak up now and fix the mess called Nigeria or else everyone will be consumed. But many of us are no longer willing actually because you know saying it as it is is because we do not for so long we have called for us to come together and reason as a people are restructure. It appears it falls on deaf air. Now, the best thing for us now to do is to your tent, O Israel. Once more, this is my Aziz, okay. I stand with Abariba. Both as the senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and as a victim of insecurity in this country. Recall, Your Excellency, my distinguished colleagues, a few months ago, Armed men invaded my house in my village, over 15 of them, 
all bearing AK-47 rifles, abducted my stepmother, abducted my two brothers, villagers came out, comforted them, released my two brothers, and went out with my, with my father's wife, who left behind an 11-day-old baby. Also, Your Excellency, a few months ago, the same bandits came back to my village and killed the ward chairman of my party in my own ward. I am a victim. Michka Madagali, that I represent here today, from 5th November to 11th January, Boko Haram visited that place nine times. They turned the place into Boko Haram ban. Whenever they run out of food, they stroll into those local governments, cut away their food, cut away their drugs, empty their shops, supermarkets, and take it back to their forest, almost unchallenged. Mr. President, we never had it this bad of recent years. We never had it this bad in this country, security-wise. Few days ago, you called me to present you at the burial of the current chairman of my local government that was abducted by Boko Haram and killed like an animal they slaughtered him. I represented you in that burial. Mr. President, a lot of us have spoken here today. But let me add my voice. Going by the budget office from 2012 2019, the Nigerian military alone received over 4.5 trillion naira. This is a government budget budgeted by the National Assembly. <laughs> Service-wide vote and other sorts of funding is not inclusive of these funds. So it's not all about funding. How do our military utilize this? On the, on the 3rd of January, when Boko Haram invaded that community, when they were repaired, they camped after Kuburusha show, a river within Michka. Security force could not go there because they told me that their vehicle has spoiled. Soldiers. Mr. President, sir, I want to plead. The service chiefs have done their best. But I think they have run out of ideas. When they came in, they came with vigor, they came with force, they came with strength. And we are seeing results. Things have deteriorated. I am calling. The service chiefs were appointed on the 5th, on the 13th of July, 2015. As of today, the service chiefs have been in office for four years, six months. We are talking about overhauling the security architecture. There is grumbling within the military. They are grumbling. Silence is no longer golden here. Let me bother out of my sister. Yes, the we are survivors are today's victim. Today's survivors are tomorrow's victim. Mr. President needs to reject the security apparatus. And if we need foreign help, we should not be ashamed of asking for foreign help to come and help us. Today, in Borno State, virtually all trunk air roads are shut down in Borno State. Trunk bureau also shut down in Borno State. Nobody there moved. I call on the president commander in chief of the armed forces to look inward. I want to repeat, the security chiefs have done their best. I think it's time to bring in new, new ideas to come and help this country. Thank you for your time, sir.